Hi, my name is Grace Speroni, and welcome back to Conversations with the ERC5. Today with me as my guest, I have Michael Cachadorian from Brookhaven Hospice. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you coming in. This is a difficult topic to talk about for many people, but I'm a firm believer um, after 10 years in senior living, this is a topic that we all need to be aware of. Uh, We need to know more about hospice and it's best to know the facts and and who can provide you the services you need before a situation arises when you need it. So I appreciate your making time to be here. Of course. Can you please tell us a little bit about Brookhaven Hospice? Sure. Brookhaven Hospice um, in West Springfield is a branch that's actually new to the area, but it has a parent company out in Westboro, Massachusetts. So we're a branch of Westboro. Um, We're new to the area servicing uh, Hamden and Hampshire counties right now. But our only service line is providing hospice care to um, individuals in and around this uh, market. So we don't do other types of care where there's agencies that will provide multiple lines of care where we're solely focused on hospice and end of life. Okay. You're new to the area. Yes. But I am so impressed with the team that you have put together. If we can talk first about Dr. May Alcall. Mm -hmm. Sure. Who is with you. Yes, we're thrilled to have Dr. May with us. Um, She is local and uh, has an enormous practice. She's well versed in hospice and she's phenomenal at what she does. So we are very lucky to have her on board. Um, so she, her capacity is, can be twofold. It could be a, uh, situation where she is both the patient's attending physician and the hospice physician because mm-hmm. in hospice, you have to have two physicians, um, on board or the patient could have their own attending physician that they have in the community. And then Dr. May would be the supplemental hospice physician. So um, she works in a couple capacities. She is amazing. She's, she's fantastic. Kudos to you for getting her on board. (laughs) And then of course you have Anna, um, who is on board with you. When I stopped by the office, I was amazed at all the familiar faces I saw from, um, the years in senior living, also from my time as a hospice volunteer, mm-hmm. Julie, Julie is with yes, you. Our and social worker. Yes. She's, I'm sure, leading um, the search for more volunteers as well. She is. She's doing two roles right now. She's our social worker and volunteer coordinator. So she is looking for volunteers. Um, hospice in general is uh, heavily reliant on volunteers in many, many capacities, from office work to visiting people in their homes to other um, type of initiatives that can support uh, the, the branch and what they're doing for the resident, for the patient and their family members. Mm -hmm. Um, so Julie right now is handling that aspect for us. So yes, she's, she's looking and recruiting volunteers for us. You've got a great team together. Yeah, we're Uh, lucky. And Anne is our program director, our our clinical director, I should Mm -hmm. say. Uh, She's an RN and she's leading the clinical team and she's assembling a a fantastic clinical team as we speak. So, well, those three ladies have um, a tremendous following, uh, very well respected mm-hmm. in the community. So I applaud you. You've done very well. So tell me a little bit about your background and what led you to hospice. Sure. I've actually been in healthcare my entire, what I say, adult career. So um, after my college years, I entered the world of skilled nursing, which most people refer to as a nursing home at the time. So I was doing that for 27 years. And I have been in and around people who are at various stages of life, whether they are elderly um, and and entering the final phases of their life to people who are younger, going to nursing homes for rehab that have an unexpected diagnosis and require end of life care. So I've seen the gamut in the nursing home world. um, And I'm drawn to to, um, that type of healthcare environment. So I spent 27 years in that environment from starting in activities up to an executive position as a marketing executive and then operations um, and administrator in nursing home for the past 10 years before I came to Brookhaven. So um, it's 
near and dear to my heart. So I've seen hospice on the periphery in those capacities. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I And I could see the good work they were doing and the support they provide, not only to the patient, but to the family members. We have yes. to, you know, hospice is very heavily focused on the family members as well. Mm-hmm. So when I left the world of nursing homes, which I did thinking I would never go back into healthcare, <laughs> <laughs> I ended up uh, with this opportunity and glad that I found it because it it is where I think I belong and um, I can now have direct influence and impact in the world of providing hospice care mm-hmm. to people that need it. So you are the programming director. Yes, that's correct. So tell me, tell our audience a little bit more about programs. Uh, what type of programs do you have? Let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. Meaning beyond hospice. Yes. So part of, we're new in the, in the area, like I had mentioned, so we're building all of our programs and we are heavily um, focused on program development in in such areas as music therapy. So Julie would be recruiting for um, music therapists, for example, to help uh, us in that initiative. Uh, pet therapy is big. So uh, our marketing community marketing liaison Kimberly is working on a program to support hospice and and the patient through pet therapy Mm -hmm. Um, and another very interesting and I think very relevant um, and important piece is virtual reality is coming into play so one of our sister sites has a um, virtual reality headset two of them so if for example a husband and wife let's use that as as an example they had a trip to Hawaii planned and then all of a sudden a life altering event happened and one or the other ended up with a diagnosis that required hospice support and they couldn't go on that trip. Well, the, the virtual reality group will load that Hawaii trip into the VR headset and the husband and wife would both put the headset on and they would take their trip to Hawaii. That's while amazing. the patient is at home on hospice. So that's something that we're excited to implement. That For us locally, that'll be a little while coming, but those are the types of programs that hospice can provide in addition to the clinical support that we're giving. Wow. I mean, I, I think music and the pet therapy, mm-hmm. I have seen that. And it, it just leaves you in awe because um, these families and the person with the diagnosis who is transitioning mm-hmm. it's amazing how how a pet can change yes. um if someone's having a bad day yes just bringing in the pet therapy changes everything for again the person with the diagnosis as it does for the families absolutely and music as well sure um but this virtual reality because the reality of things is that sometimes people receive a diagnosis that changes everything. Yes. And on their bucket list is that trip to Hawaii. That's right. We were going to do this. We were going to do that. That still allows them the opportunity to experience it together. Yes, it does. Um, and and I, I love that idea. That sounds wonderful. Yes, it's, and, and it's the tip of the iceberg, I think, in mm-hmm. terms of virtual reality for people in uh, in and on hospice and in, in their family members. So we're looking forward to where that goes and how that can support um, the family and bring a little bit of um, joy during a very difficult time. Well, and that's the thing with hospice. Again, it's a, it's a difficult conversation mm-hmm. to have because we are always talking about end of life or transitioning and saying goodbye to someone. But that's what hospice helps with. Hospice comes in and you help the family and you help the person with the diagnosis transition. That's right. Um, And you make sure that everything is is touched and done and that there aren't any um, anything left behind, you know, you don't, you don't miss out on the little things, That's you right. know, it's important that someone say goodbye to someone. You, you help them to write that letter. If that person isn't present, That's correct. Yes, there's that's so right. many ways that you give hope mm-hmm. to families. And, and sometimes we also have chaplain services. So a lot of times, uh, it's a non-denominational service, but a lot of times that our chaplain will also find for somebody who, it wasn't necessarily a, a practicing religious their person. Their yes. faith. Um, our chaplain will connect them to that faith because now they want to be part of that. So our chaplain will do all that work to support the family members in finding who that faith person could be that they can 
connect them to so they can have those moments, you know, while they're on hospice. So we will do that work for them. Um, our social worker, Julie, was talking to a, a, one of our first patients that we have taken the other day. And, and the conversation was really heavily a, around why they chose to go on hospice and how um, that decision was made. And it was an interesting evolution to hear how the patient decided to to come on hospice and Julie was there to support and base in and essentially provide some sort of therapy as a social worker around that topic and then they'll continue to meet weekly around it so it helps also the patient and their family members to um, talk about it and come to terms with it as well and and find um, some positive aspects of it in a very you know in a situation that isn't always viewed as a positive one. And it is. It's very difficult to say hospice Mm -hmm. can be positive. Mm -hmm. But when you've experienced it with others, I always found I took away so much more from the experience than I ever was able to give as a volunteer. Because um, your faith is renewed. Mm -hmm. Every time uh, a family says goodbye, I just feel that when you do bring in hospice, it is a uh, smoother transition and everyone is much more at peace with what is happening that's right I um, think, and that's a good point if i could i think hospice isn't some people might think hospice is set up to advance the process and it's not it, you really were we're right it's we're supportive in nature mm-hmm. where we we're not there all the time um But our nurse case managers uh, develop care plans, and that includes social care plans for family members and and friends as well. And um, it's a supportive environment where we educate everyone involved who wants to be part of that that patient's care team so that we create the care team with their family members and friends Mm -hmm. and then support that care team and uh, help them connect to the patient in a way that's a little bit more intimate than they may have Mm-hmm. you know, casually in yes. their relationship. And that in and of itself is, is very positive. So we find that family members and friends do get a lot more out of the service than I think they anticipated they would have. Yes. Yes, you do. You help with all of that. And, and that's why I think it's important that, um, our, our members and viewers be aware of what hospice can provide, the services that you offer, and understand that it is something that involves the whole family and helps yes. everyone in this, in this difficult time mm-hmm. through a transition. Um, and with your help, there can, there can be those moments of, of spark and, and yes. moments that you hold on to for the rest of your life. Absolutely. So if our viewers want to learn more about Brookhaven Hospice, or if we have viewers who are watching and are thinking, I'd like to donate my time. How do I become a a hospice volunteer? How may they get in touch with you? So two ways you could call us, certainly, or um, visit brookhavenhospice.com, and all the information is there um, for anyone to take a look at. Um, We're also looking to hire staff, too. So we're also providing that for the community as well as um, employing staff that may want to enter that world of, of hospice care. Um, so all that information is there. Okay. A very rewarding. A very um, rewarding. Career. Yes. For sure. Indeed. I appreciate you making your time to be here with us today and, and to discuss this and sharing all that Brookhaven Hospice can offer our viewers. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for watching this episode today. For more episodes, please visit our website at erc5.com and learn how you could be our next guest. 